What's up everybody, I am Legend here with Ditto and today we're talking about the basics of how to make beats for beginners, everything from the tools and software you'll need, all the way down to a few production techniques that you may want to try out as you're making your music. So let's dive into it. Today we're also partnering with Shure to give away the legendary SM7B microphone to one of you lucky viewers out there. All you have to do is of course be subscribed to this channel and leave a comment down below on today's video, maybe something like how you got into music production yourself. Lastly, if you're getting into making beats, you're probably going to want to know how to release that at some point in your career. Well, you're actually in the right place because Ditto Music helps you to release your music to the major streaming platforms like Spotify or Apple Music. If you wanna give it a try, there's a link down below for 30 days, you don't have to pay anything. See how you like it. So first and foremost, there are some basic universal pieces of hardware and software that you're gonna need in order to start making your beats. Whether Mac or PC is entirely dependent on you, your workflow, and your operating system preference, it could also depend on the equipment that you own or want to buy because certain ones are only compatible with certain operating systems. Just make sure that you have either a laptop, a desktop, a phone, a tablet, something that's capable of making music. If you want a little bit more detail in what specs you should be looking for, we'll include a link to a video that I've made that discusses exactly this topic. The second thing that I recommend all beginning producers get is some type of MIDI controller, whether that's a keyboard or a drum pad or a keyboard with drum pads. For me, I actually have the Native Instruments Machine Mark III. My song sequencing, my formatting and processing goes all through here. Most DAWs do have step sequencers or some sort of way to still produce without these physical products. However, I feel that it tends to make the music making process a little bit more intuitive when you can touch the things that you're producing. So I would say usually a 25 to 49 key keyboard will do you just fine. The next thing is gonna be a pair of headphones. Now, I wouldn't say these are necessarily required because most computers, most phones, tablets have speakers. But the reason you want a pair of headphones is obviously for some isolation from the outside world to better hear the music that you're producing. Not only this though, you're gonna save a lot of people around you a headache or you know, save yourself from getting slapped in the back of the head <laughs> for playing your music too loud. Now, speaking of software, of course, you're gonna need software to record your music in. And the choices can range depending on your skill level, your operating system, and whether or not you even want plugins included into your DAW. But a DAW or a digital audio workstation is going to be the place where you make your beats. So this could be FL Studio, this could be Ableton, this could be Logic Pro. These are all very popular options amongst the music production community. Now you're gonna have to pay for these, but there are some free options for those of you out there who don't have money as well. Programs like GarageBand can work on your iPhone, your iPad, or even your Mac computer, and it comes for free. For Windows, you can use Reaper, you can use Cakewalk. Now most DAWs will actually come with their own sample library, which is a collection of sounds that you use to make your beats. You can also build on these sample libraries by crafting your own sounds. This is how I got started, or purchasing sample libraries and sound packs that are available on different websites. Maybe try checking out Splice or Sounds.com. The same can be said for the plugins in your DAW. If you're just starting out making your beats, you're probably gonna be using stock plugins anyway, but just know that plugins are indeed going to help you craft your sound in a way that some of these other options can. <laughs> So now that you have everything, software and hardware, how do you start? <laughs> the biggest thing I can say is you start with a feeling. In that moment, what vibe do you want to create? What's naturally coming to you? What do you feel? Here's an example. I was thinking about Justin Timberlake's future sex love sounds. <laughs> So what do you think I felt when I made this? I wanted to make something upbeat. I wanted to make something fun and lively. So my genre is funk. My vibe is something like 1970s, but current. So there's the foundation. That's our base. Where do we start making our beat? The drums or the instrumentation? Now there honestly isn't a right or wrong answer to this. Half the time I start my songs with my drums, half the time I start my songs with my melodies. As long as you have the general vibe that you wanna create, you can start anywhere. That's the, that's the verse, that's the verse. <laughs> Now 
you see how I feel like it creates that sexy mood already with that low rumbling bass. And then the vocal samples that I put in there just for a little bit of fun. So I have that sexiness and I have that fun of an upbeat song. Now, of course, it's pretty empty. There's not much going on. It's just a vocal and a bass. So now we need to occupy more space in our song. You can try adding different elements, different instruments at different points. As cheesy as it sounds, you have to remember that we're telling a story. It's just not a visual one. It's one that you can hear. Since we have the melody laid down now, I'm gonna go ahead and add my drums. If you've already started with your drums, you can then add the melody, whichever you wanna go with. Now, since you're a beginner, it's important to remember, you're not gonna know everything there is to know about music theory. I don't even know everything there is to know about music theory, but you have to make sure that you don't let your inexperience kind of hold you back from trying new things. Most sample websites that you can download loops and samples from allow you to sort by BPM or the key of the sample. This sort of helps alleviate the need for knowing music theory, but it's still something that you wanna learn eventually. Throughout this process, you wanna make sure that you're just having fun. But at some point, you know you're gonna to need to finalize it and finish your beat, especially if you want to start writing to it. This is where I listen over my song a few times after I think I'm done. <laughs> And what I like to do in this stage of the process is see if the song takes me for a ride or do I get bored while I'm listening to it. Now the ride, it doesn't always have to be a wild, crazy one. It doesn't have to be a sickle mode beat change or key modulations all the time. It could be just something pleasant to consistently listen to. From there, you can decide how you want to mix your beat. So this is where I start adding different plugins to different things like my drums. Basically, these last few stages are the stages in which you're trying to refine your sound. You're trying to dial in the punchiness or the thickness. Does it sound as clear as you want it to sound? Does it pop as much as you want it to pop? Now, these are things that come with time, you know, learning how to hear these differences, these what's more punchy, what's not. All in all, the process for making a beat these days is a lot less complex than you might think it is. All it requires is just a bit of inspiration, a few simple tools, and the time to do so. Now, hopefully you found this video to be helpful. Be sure to leave a like, and once again, if you want a chance to win the iconic SM7B microphone, subscribe and leave a comment down below on this video. And in the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. All right, stay legendary. Peace.